Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to talk about saws and saw quality. What should you look for when you're wanting to buy a saw? Uh, is there anything specific or which brand is worth buying? So let's actually dive in and take a look at this. So here we have a collection of some of my saws. Now this is not all of them, but this is a good selection. And I want to kind of go through this and show some of the things you want to look for and some of the things you don't want to look for. And predominantly we're going to be looking at back saws. Uh, the reason back saws is because panel saws and hand saws are a little bit more common and easier to get, and I'll be talking about that a little bit later. But back saws are where people tend to have a lot more questions. So I want to dive into this and look at some of the things in particular. So a back saw, is a saw that has a back on it. This stiff piece running along the back of the saw is what makes it a back saw. And they come in many different types. This one has a steel back, I have brass backs, and we even have some polymer backs. They all end up doing the same function. They allow the plate to be thinner, and this provides the stiffness to the blade so it will hold its shape as you push it forward through the work. But not all backs are created equal. Some of them are a little more useful than others. Particularly here you can see this is a folded back. So this used to be a straight piece of metal that was folded up on it and is pinching the blade. This allows the blade to move a little bit and flex inside of this. This is generally the best type is a folded back. Most of the oldest folded backs are brass. That is very, very common, especially anything in England. Whereas in America, you tend to find a lot more steel folded backs. Now, steel folded backs are harder to make. They are stiffer. They're slightly lighter than the brass. And so for most instances, a steel folded back is actually a little bit better, but it doesn't look as good. I mean, just look at that. The brass looks awesome. Now we can look at non-folded backs. You can see how this actually had a cut put into it and that blade then fits into the cut. And usually either that cut is really, really tight and it's jammed up in there or the back is then glued into place. This holds the blade far more stiffly, but if there's ever any kink or pressure in the blade, it will start causing problems. So usually a folded back is not quite as good. This becomes very important in your larger saws, such as your tenon saws. Because you have such a tall plate, such a long plate, it's very easy for your hand to go out of alignment, and that will cause the blade to want to catch, and the whole, bla and the whole saw will want to bend. And having a folded back means that the plate can slide around in there and work its way around, rather than just kinking and you now have a permanent kink in your blade. So whenever possible, get a folded back. But for a lot of the smaller saws, like dovetail saws, the plate is really small and you're not going to run into that as much of an issue because there isn't as much of a force behind it or a chance for the blade to twist. So on smaller saws, the folded back is not quite as important. And that's where the Veritas saws, they're actually a polymer that the blade is glued into. They have a little bit of flex to them, but you can't reset them and they're not quite as versatile. Now you are going to save a lot of money with this because it's much, much easier to produce, but in the long run you may end up running into issues if you're not careful with it. The next thing I want to look at is the handle. And this is my favorite handle of all my saws. This one is from Bearcat Woodworking. He does amazing, amazing work. And you can notice how it's nice and rounded. You have an oval shape to the handle. Some people prefer to have a little bit of a flat here, and this does have a little bit of a flat, uh, but it is shaped to my hand, and it's the thing when it goes in, it just feels so good. It is shaped and ergonomic, and it really, really clean lines, and there aren't any hard points. Everything just feels phenomenal. And this makes working with saws just incredibly fun. Next up we have the Veritas saw, and you can see how it's shaped fairly similar, but there is a lot less detail into it. And uh, you, know, you see you don't have the bump for the finger in there, and just uh, it's not quite as good, but it's still well rounded on here, and you have a, a good bit more of a flat side on here, but it's not amazingly rounded. It does have a good registration, and it feels relatively decent, but this is a, something that's not really designed for individual hands. And then we can come up into this more modern hand style. And this has a large flat area. It's not quite rounded as well in here. It's not shaped as well. So it doesn't feel as good, but I mean, some people like this feel. It's just not as much to me because it just doesn't, uh, I don't know, it doesn't feel quite the way I would want it to feel. A lot of people are gonna talk about the steel used in the saw and how that's incredibly important. And I really have to say, it's, it's not important. All of these saws, the cheapest to the most expensive, are all gonna be using a decent spring steel. And that's all you need for the saw. It's something that you're gonna be able to sharpen, you're something you're gonna be able to work through. The steel really doesn't matter that much. 
In my opinion, the thing that matters the most is the handle, something that feels good to you. And that's really kind of a personal choice. So it's one of the things you're going to want to think about because having a good feel on it means that you're going to be doing a little bit better work because you're thinking about it, you're feeling it. And if you feel good with the saw, you'd be surprised at how good you can make things work. The most important thing to the function of a saw is its teeth. It doesn't matter how good the blade is, if the teeth aren't filed well, the saw won't do well. And if I take my cheapest saw and I file the teeth really well, it will still cut really, really well. So I can take the cheapest saw on the bench, and as long as these teeth are sharpened well, it will cut just as well as the best saw on my bench, and the one I like the most. These teeth are what are important, and that really depends on you. So initially you might want to say that saw X cuts better than saw Y. And that might be true depending upon who originally sharpened it in the shop, but after it gets dull, you're the one who's going to be sharpening it. So after it gets dull, it really doesn't matter who made the saw. How well the saw cuts will depend on how well you can sharpen the saw. Now most of the time, on most tools, I tell people if you're kind of price conscious, go with an antique saw. You can clean them up, restore them, sharpen them, and they will work fantastically for a fraction of the price. But when it comes to back saws, Antique saws are crazy expensive. These things cost just as much, if not more, than the brand new saws. And so most of the time I'm going to tell you people, if you're, if you're money conscious, get a new back saw. Don't get an antique. But if you like the history and using something that you know that many crafts people have used in the past, having an antique saw just feels really good. So now let's do a comparison of saws and pricing. If you're looking at the sub $50 category, you're probably going to be coming with a plastic handle or a very quickly mass produced handle. Now this is a little older mass produced, but it's still in that same category. You'll generally find them with screws rather than nuts. Um, and they're just, they don't feel good and they're not quite as good a quality. And a lot of these with plastic handles you're actually going to find with hardened teeth, which means you can't sharpen them. So I, I don't really like getting anything under 50 bucks. I haven't found one that will do the work that I like it to do and last me long enough. And so usually I'm going to say if you're looking for a saw, you're going to want to go above $50. And for that, we have a couple saws in that price range. The most common one that we come across is the Veritas. It's not a folded back, it's a polymer back, so you have to be a little more careful with it. Now you can see on this one, which is my tenon saw, I actually kinked it a little bit right up here. And having these bolts through up here means that the blade can't move and it allowed it to kink. So that's one of the things you just have to be careful with. Um, you know, don't over push the saw. Another saw that I really like in the sub $100 category is Lynx saws. They're the ones that I link to in my suggested tools. There's a link to that down below. Um, and they're really, really good. They're under $100, and they'll last you a lifetime if you take care of them. They're not amazing in every way. They were made a little bit quicker, but they're a good quality saw. So Lynx or Veritas, I really like them. For under $100, you just can't go wrong for that price range. So then we can move up to the saws that are over $100, but they're not quite premium saws. These are going to take a little bit of getting used to. Like these from PAX. I love the PAX saws. They are phenomenal saws. They're a little bit thicker than I like, but they feel good. There's a nice brass back on them. They're good stiff saws that will last you a lifetime. The only thing I don't like about them is the handles have a very sharp edge here. And generally, if I'm going to be using a PAX saw quite a bit, I'm going to take a file and clean it up and shape it to my hand a bit more. And I really like that, especially with the split nuts on them. They're just a really, really good saw. You take care of them, and these will last you a lifetime. A little over $100 per saw, but they're well worth it. Another saw in the over $100 price range that I really like is Florip saws. Uh, they're made here in the USA, and he does a phenomenal job on them. There's a little bit of a back order on them, so you've got to have a time to get in there. But they're... For the price, they're phenomenal. They're really, really good saws that will last you a lifetime. I'm actually hoping to get one of those here in the shop here soon. I just don't have one here. I've gotten to play with them in the past. And they are, for that zone, really, really good. And so usually I'm going to suggest either the PAX or the Florup saws. The Florup saws are a little bit lighter weight um, and have a little bit better handle, whereas the PAX saws are a heavier weight, a thicker blade, more resilient, but the handle isn't quite as comfortable. And now we can get into the premium saws. And this is one from Bearcat Toolworks. It's one of the early ones um, before he really got into it. So this one still has the, uh, the shape back. He now has a folded back saw. And they are incredible. These will last many, many lifetimes. And they feel just 
Oh man, I love this. Um, it is one of my favorite saws to use, but there's, only, there's a reason that I only have one premium saw is that these are incredibly expensive. They're usually well over $200, some of them getting up into $400. Um, you have Bad Axe Toolworks that does phenomenal jobs. You have Blackburn Toolworks who makes great saws, and there, there's a few others out there. But if you're shopping for a premium saw, you know what you're looking for because you've already experienced these other saws and you have some money and you're willing to put into it. Premium saws are kind of that point where you've done the work, now you want something that's backing it. And uh, yeah, once you have one there, mm, I love every chance I get to play with one of these. There are many other companies out there who make good saws. This is just kind of touching the basics of the ones I know and I trust. And I hope this gives you an idea. There are many different categories. You know, if you want to be under $100, there are saws for that. I generally tell people don't go under 50 bucks unless you find a killer deal on an antique saw. You're just not going to find many that are worth it. But as the price goes up, so does the quality, and generally, the more you pay, the better the saw you're going to get. But keep in mind, the only thing that really matters is the teeth on the saw. And so after you've dulled it, it's down to you to sharpen it. And a cheap saw can sharpen just as well as a premium saw, as long as the teeth are sharpened well. So don't stress about it too much if you're getting into it. Get a cheaper saw. You're going to be fine with it, and it's going to teach you what a good sharp saw should feel like, and then you can learn and practice on it. And that way, if you make any mistakes or problems, your practicing will be on a cheaper saw. And at some point in the future, be like, mm, I want to upgrade and get something a little better. And then you can upgrade and get your premium saw or something in between, wherever it would fit into your wallet. I know I've kind of breezed through this topic, and there are lots of other companies out there I would like to talk about, and other things about the saws that really make them nice or fun, and I could talk about nuts and medallions, and yeah, you can get really deep into this, and I could go for hours on this project. But, but I want to keep this video at least somewhat short-ish, even though this one's probably going to run long. So I hope this helped you out in understanding what makes a back saw worth it and where in the price range you would fall. If you do have any other questions or ideas or concerns, let me know those in the comments down below. I'd love to read those. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel is here today. The people who've clicked that join button and have become patrons, you are absolutely amazing so thank you for that if you ever meet anyone who's scrolling over to the side tell them thank you because without them wood by right would not exist today as always i want to say thanks for watching and until next time have a wonderful day back saw back scratcher